Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. We're going to come into the house of prayer. We're uplifting our hands to say, God, thank you. Amen. How great is thy God. Amen. Hallelujah. How great is thy God. Amen. Is thou God? Sing with me how great is thou God. All will see how great, how great is thou God. Everybody sing how great, how great is thou God. Is thou God. Everybody sing, sing with me how, how great. great is thou God, all oh, will see how great, how great is thou God. Come on, sing how great is thou God. Sing with me how great, all oh, will see how great. How great is our God, oh, he's the name above all names, and he's worthy of our praise, and our hearts will sing how great is our God. He's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. And he's worthy, and he's worthy, worthy, he's worthy. Of our praise. With our hearts, and our hearts will sing how great, how great is our God. He's the name above all names. Sing that one more time. Now, yeah. He's the name above all names, and he's worthy of our praise. And our hearts will sing how great is our God. He's the name above all names. Oh, and you're so worthy, and you're so worthy, worthy of our praise. With our hearts we sing, our hearts will sing how great, how great is, is our, our God. God. Oh, he's the name above all names. The name above all names. And you're so worthy, you're so and worthy, you're worthy so worthy. With the hearts we we'll see we'll how great, great is our God. God. In spite of all we go through, He's still an awesome God. How great, how great is our God. God. Singing like you mean it. How great is our God. Is is our God. God. All we'll see, all we'll see how, great. how great, how great. Our God, how great is our God? Oh, you're so awesome, God. You're so awesome, God. 
we can give it all to you. We can lean and depend on you. How great. Oh, we'll see how great. How great. How great. Oh, we'll see. How great. His outcome.
because he has proven himself over and over and over again. Amen. Hallelujah. Give an honor to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for everyone being back in the house of worship one more time. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Welcome, St. Stephen, those that are in our virtual sanctuary. We say thank you for choosing St. Stephen to worship and praise God with this morning. Amen. Let's continue to pray for our pastor in his absence. Give an honor to Reverend Abram, Lady Abram, Reverend Nichols, Minister Clement. And y'all ready for a word? I know Brother Reverend Abram got a word for us on this morning. Amen. We ask that you hope, open your hearts, your minds, the ears to receive what God has to say. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together as we have a song by the male chorus. Amen. Put your hands together as they come forth. Praise the Lord. Oh, man. 
Yes, I am. Lord, Lord you are God. Have you there anybody here? Lord, you are God. Have for me. God has for you. Lord, you are God. Have for me. Then you gon' get. Lord, you are God. Have for me. What He has for me. Lord, you are God. Tell me your labor is mine. It's mine. All mine. All mine. It's 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 yours. It's yours. Go get it. Go get it. It's yours. Gracious God, lover of our souls, you've been so good to us. So we just come to say thank you. Not only a blessing coming our way, <clears throat> we've been blessed all week, all year, all of the days of our life. And as much we would like to take credit for it, Lord, we know it was not us. It was all about you. Because if it was about us, Lord, <clears throat> if we wouldn't be behind this church, sleeping forever, we'll be in some lonely graveyard. But because of you, our God, of endless mercy, 
We have not been consumed. But yet we are alive. Just to say thank you. Just to tell a dying world that's looking for hope. Looking for a reason to live. Where we found our joy. Where we found our peace. Where we found our everything. But we found the blessing that we've been seeking simply because we took you at your word. You said, come before my presence with thanksgiving. And don't ever get to the point where you forget to pray. We thank you for prayer. We thank you for a God who would not only listen you would answer. So Lord, we ask you now one thing that you do for this congregation and for this pastor. Would you head around Camden, South Carolina? There's a man and a family there who've lost the duel of their life. And even though he preaches he teaches, he share your word, he lift other people's spirit, but Lord, he need all that he ever get. He needs someone to pray. He needs someone to just to say it's going to be all right. He needs someone to walk beside him and say, brother, if you don't feel like it, just lean on me. And if it's hurt, it's all right to say it's hurt. If it's sad, say you are a little confused. Because even after 100, almost 102, mothers don't live long enough for all the love they share. It's okay. But know that there is a God who understands. He will not kick you to the curb. Because <clears throat> you all, don't always be the rock of the bronze. But he is mine. For his children are brought up. For he said his yoke was easy. His burden was light. There's enough room for him and for you and for me on his shoulder. He is not the only one <clears throat> in this hour. All over Orangeburg. Back in the city of Marion. There's a cousin named Josephine hanging on this set by a thread. One we walk with, talk with, live in the house with, ate from the same table. Who need you just to come by? We won't be selfish to pick her up. But like me, Lord, you've given her a lot of time. We just give her peace peace of mind, knowing that everything, even her life, is in your hand. And if she invested it right, and she never got, like my mother said, too big for her bridges or dress, but always humble herself before you, she can rest now, because you promised. You told us what you want, and you said what pleases you is not only just faith, but a humble and contrite heart. He's done that. If we've done that, it is well with our soul. So again, we thank you for that day when all is just behind us. And we are in a land where the sun never burns us up. The shade is always on our right and our left. And there's a tree that feed us so sick to the thing of the past. There'll be no confusion there. Because the evil one can't follow us that day. We will leave him here as we go to be with the angels and you. Oh, we all keep saying we want to see our mothers, our father. I too would like to see them. But Lord, if I don't see them anymore, I want to see the man. I want to see the one. I want to see my Savior. 
who when I didn't do all I ought to do, when I didn't say all I needed to say, and those times when I did more than you would want me to do, and I said what you would have me not say, even when it entered my mind and I didn't speak it at all, and you were so forgiving that you gave me another chance. It's in that appreciation that I stand before you today to share what I've learned with your people that I love. Help me now. That somebody might hear that even I might be listening because whatever they're going through, whatever they are dealing with, I'm dealing too. Their weakness is my weakness. And we never get so strong, Lord, that we don't need you. So we come now, saying, come, Holy One, come with your power. So we can truly worship you in a way that it will wake up others to come and want to worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The people of God would please him by saying, Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Ava. Scripture reading, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. And I'm reading the NIV version. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. To, to the one who seeks, find. To the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for a bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, you give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to the children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Verse 12, so in everything, do to others what you will have them to do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Now we will have the announcement by Sister Jarvis. Good morning. If you would please like for everyone to tag, like, and share our worship service this morning via Facebook. Friendly reminder on Tuesday morning is our intercessory prayer at 8 o'clock a.m. via conference call and our Word Lovers Bible studies every Wednesday via Zoom at 7 o'clock p.m. The ad hoc committee will be meeting immediately after the worship service this morning to discuss with the committee chairs. If you are a committee chair of any organization here at St. Stephen, you ask to please remain after service for approximately 15 minutes. This is coming from Reverend Nichols, chairperson, and Ms. Tan Pepper, co-chair. We have been announcing this, so today is the day that we'll be meeting with the committee chairs immediately after service to discuss the process for the policy and procedure manual that is being developed for the St. Stephen United Methodist Church. Please save the date of June 8th, which is our Grow Your Fruit banquet that we'll be having with our church family and the community. More information is forthcoming. Attorney Adrian Dukes will be here on Saturday, May 18th. Time to be determined for those who attended the will session back in 2023. He will have our wills at that time, and we are asking you to please be present on Saturday, May 18th, to finish that process. Again, this was the, uh, is the nephew of Sister Tracy Green, and we certainly thank her for this service, his health and welfare. The celebration for Pastor Carter has been moved to June 23rd, and the asking is still the same. $100 from each life group and auxiliary, and personal giving if so desired. 
The usher ministry is currently recruiting junior ushers, ranging from middle school to high school. Parents, if you would like for your child to participate, please see Sister Ollie Pepper or Sister Latrina Holmes. Sister Ollie Pepper is chairperson of usher, and Sister Holmes is associate chairperson. Today is the anniversary for Cedar Grove United Methodist Church, and their guest speaker will be Reverend Hayes Ganey. If you are not able to attend, they are doing the uh, conference call, and if you would like to listen in at 3 o'clock p.m., please come and get the number from me. I'll be happy to give you that conference call number. Ms. Talisha Cobb, who attends Winthrop College, received recognition from the 2024 Leadership Conference for having a GPA along with others of 3.0 or better. She is the granddaughter of Ms. Dorothy Cobb, and we are proud of her this morning. That's Ms. Talisha Cobb. And this, this is a little biased, but now you know, y'all see why when I make it. This is coming from Queens University. The president and the faculty of Queens University of Charlotte announces that Anasia A. Muhammad is a candidate for the degree of Masters of Arts in Communication on Saturday, May 4th at 9 o'clock a.m. at the Hale Brown Terrace on the campus of Queens University. Uh, we remember her when she was basically, how to say, knee high to a duck, <laughs> or, or whatever they call it, she was knee high. And we are so proud of all of our young people, but we actually see her grow up like so many others in our church. We are so proud of them, and we ask God to continue to bless her. And Ms. Lorraine is going to she's going to shout for joy on May 4th. So we are pleased to announce that Mr. Naja Muhammad, that's it, <laughs> they will be in Charlotte on May 4th celebrating the graduation of Ms. Naja Muhammad. Amen. Men's Ministry will be sponsoring their annual Mother's Day Drive breakfast, Mother's Day Drive breakfast on Saturday. May 11th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. This is their annual breakfast that they do, but you please meet the RSVP to Marcus Jarvis at 803-682-2561 or Michael Pepper at 803-308-4220 by Wednesday, May 8th. One more time. Oh, yes, sir. I got you. <laughs> We're going to do it one more time for the chairperson back here, Brother Pepper. They are having our annual Women's Day, I mean Mother's Day drive through breakfast here at the church on Saturday, May 11th from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. Please see Brother Marcus Jarvis or contact Marcus Jarvis or Michael Pepper. And I do have their numbers here, so I will give it to you at the end of service. This needs to be done by May 8th, which is the Wednesday prior to the breakfast. So May 8th, please have your reservation in to the men's ministry. And on, we'd like to thank Brother Pepper and his committee and their ministry for honoring us on that weekend. Amen. Happy birthday to all born in the month of April. And today, we are so pleased to recognize our very own mother of the church, Ms. Ruth L. Johnson, celebrating 91 years today. That deserves a happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 91 years. Let's sing it. If you don't know how to sing this song, ready? One, two, three. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. And please continue to keep our sick and shut-in members in your prayers and families who are going through bereavement. Um, condolences to Miss Shirley Wright in the loss of her sister-in-law, who she skipped it several times. Miss Eartha Vivian Thomas, we are praying for her and that family. And definitely, as we know, please keep Pastor Carter and his family in your prayers for the loss of his mother. And continue prayers for the Elkinsons, Westcott, and Sislop families who buried their la loved one on last week as well. So we have a lot to pray for, pray for strength, and pray for all those who are experiencing any type of challenges this morning, whether they're health, mental, physical, whatever they are, please lift them up to God because he will answer prayer. Amen. At okay. Someone drop this outside. What's he saying? He want to know if there's any money in it? <laughs> want me to check? I don't have on my glasses, but did you raise your hand? Oh, that's my Aunt Priscilla. She'll get it to you, darling. For the red seal, I think it might be makeup, so we're all right. <laughs> we got it for you. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we will bring up Miss Cynthia Green. And don't forget, immediately after service, to meet with the chairperson of the ad hoc committee, Reverend Richard. How are you today? We are having our annual celebration for our anniversary, where we are giving out the plaque and naming the individual who participated for as a, the age of the church and on up. So we're going to start with the honorable mention, and those are the individuals who came the age of the church. And if you would please stand when I call your name. Sister Teresa Baylor, um, Mr. Albert Burton, Mrs. Iona Burton, Ms. Katrina Green, Sister Ruth L. Johnson, Sister Josephine Mitchell, Sister Gail Warren, and Sister Shirley Wright. Those are the individuals that paid $154 up to $199. Our next, our next category is the bronze category, and these individuals paid $200. And we have Sister Elizabeth Mack, Sister Trina Turtvan, and Brother Israel Wild. Um, these individuals will receive a certificate, and um, Reverend Carter is right here to sign it so that we, they'll be receiving them next week. Next is our silver donors who paid $250. First Lady Carter, Sister Lorraine Hill, um, Brother Nimbert Green, Brother Marvis, Marcus Jarvis, Brother Michael U. Jarvis, Sister Barbara Levy, Sister Frida Smith, and Sister Angela Williams. Um, the plaques will be placed in the back next week. Our, our gold donors who paid $500, we have Reverend Kenneth Carter, sister, Brother Ezekiel Felder. I have to tell you all a story about Sister Caroline Hill. I know she won't mind me saying it, but Sister Caroline has paid the age of the church for umpteen years. But <laughs> last year she came to me and she said, Cynthia, I'm going to reach that $500 this year. Praise God. Sister Caroline Hill. <laughs> Sister Latoya Green, who is Glenn, I'm sorry, Latoya Glenn, is a friend of Latrina. And she mistakenly sent some money two times. <laughs> and she told Latrina, just, you just don't, don't worry about sending it back. So I told Latrina, we'll put it on the anniversary so she can be announced. Sister Janice Harrison, Sister Deborah Myers, and Brother Shelton's sister. Those are our $500 donors. We only have one diamond. 
again. Brother Jeremiah Sitchell. <laughs> His whole name. <laughs> okay, and our plaque, our platinum donors, the plaque. What y'all made up? Oh, I'm sorry. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. And these are our platinum donors who donated $1,000. And we appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we appreciate everybody, not just the um, platinum people. Uh, if I didn't say that in the beginning, my error. Sister Joanne Abram. And if you just line up this way right here, because we want Sister Angie to take a picture of y'all. Sister Lily Britt. Sister Cynthia Green. Brother Larry Harrison. Sister Florinda Gail Jarvis. Brother Michael P. Jarvis. Sister Linda Larkin, she's not going to get a um, plaque. She says she's had enough of it. <laughs> Brother Rex Larkin. This is Rex's first year. We know he's going to do some more. <laughs> Sister Janelle Mitchell. Brother Michael Myers. Sister Mildred. Rope Lorraine, Laron, Sister Shanice Schuler, Brother Leon Sistrunk, posthumously, Sister Rachel Sistrunk, and Sister Jeanette, Jeanette Welch. Now, Jeanette's is going to look a little different because she already has her 2023, but that's her 2022. <laughs> Angie, you got the picture? I just want to read the plaque. That's another one who don't want a plaque no more. <laughs> and it says, faithful servant, your service honors the Lord and others. Grace, mercy, peace be to you. you well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you all for, for your participation. Come now to remind us that in the midst of worship, giving is not an intermission. It's part of our worship. But where one's heart is, the treasure will be there. So said the word. So let him know the day where our heart is. And that is the support of this ministry. Prayer has its place. But they said money answer all things. I think I read that somewhere, Jerry, in the word. Hello. Sort of like, if you love me, show it. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. And I find out over the years that you don't lose by doing what God asks you to do. So now, with your offering in your hand, as you remain seated, please lift it in the air that they might know that even though Reverend Carter is not here, 
you're not giving this to me. You're giving this to God. Eternal God, bless now to give for your people. Some have much to give. Some have little. And some may not have any. But we do have something to give. We can give you our lives. That would please you more than anything. For you can take our little old lives and make many good things out of it. So bless now our gift to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for all what's been said. Thank you, Reverend Tabor. Now we're going to have another selection by the male chorus. And after that, I want you to stand to your feet, put your hands together for the man of God, Reverend Abel, who's going to bring forth the word. And let's keep in mind, we're not clapping for him. We're clapping for the God in him that's going to bring us the word. Amen. Mic check. When you call on Jesus, he'll be right there. When you call that name, he'll be right there. When you call on Jesus, he'll be right there. Go ahead and call. Call on Jesus, he'll be right there. Go ahead and call. Call on Jesus, he'll be right there. When your money gets funny, he'll be right there. Change get a little strange, he'll be right there. You got to call that name. He'll be right Go there. ahead and call. Call on Jesus. He'll be right Go there. ahead and call. Call on Jesus. He'll be right there. When your body feels sick. He'll be right there. Seem like you can't get away. He'll be right there. You got to call on. Go ahead and call. Call on Jesus. He'll be right there. Go ahead and call. Come on, brother, he'll help, help me right out. There. You'll call on the master. He'll be right there. You'll call on the master. He'll be right there. You'll call on the master. He'll be right there. Call on Jesus. He'll be right there. Call on Jesus. He'll be right there. Oh, I said call. Call on him. Just call. Call on him. Just call. Call on him. You can call.
right there. Every time he'll be right there. Thank you so much. I know what you were singing about. There were so many times I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I called him. He showed up. I, I still didn't know. But I knew to follow him. He led me out. Oh, he'll show up. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We honor Reverend Carter and Sister Terry Carter in their absence. And all the others that are missing on this day, they're usually in the sanctuary with us. Even our virtual audience. When I began preaching, you talk about having church online. I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, I worry my own son to death. Keep calling him to even tell me how to work my iPhone. But we're going to get there. So we thank God so much. We want to just recognize those, and not in this particular order, but sister, I uh, uh, can't even think of a name now. <laughs> sister, you. <laughs> Nick, sister Nichols, our evangelist, pastor on the piano, and, and my darling in the pew. Any other minister, uh, clergy, 
fitting in the audience. We recognize you. We recognize all of you. Because you are my family. You are our church. Yeah? I go to church before I come to this church in the morning. Almost every Sunday morning. But this is still home. Because this is where the family lives. I, I want to thank whoever set up the programs and the, the, the rotation. Because each time I'm in the pulpit, guess who, who are in the pulpit with me? The notorious Dale Coors. Yeah! You know, you know, you don't, you don't like to take credit for things. And I just keep telling people I just happened to be here when they was born. The only thing I did was walk up beside Brother Larry and push him in the side and say, you know, it'd be nice if we had a male chorus. I, I was part of one back home, and they let me sing with them, even though I couldn't sing. And sometimes I don't get a chance to preach. Maybe y'all will let me sing, too. And Larry got his group together to begin to work. And I have watched you grow through the years. Some of those that started, they're no longer with us. But they knew when that I had to come back to church to meet. And I thank God. See, he kind of reminds us sometimes it's so much about us. It's about the God we serve. And sometimes we think a church will die or live, depending on how we feel. Let me tell you something. Head to the graveyard. Think Stephen's going to be open. Hello? If I don't ever get another invitation back, because I might blow my chance today. But think Stephen will still be open. But you just sow the seed. Do what God asks you to do. I look at the male leaders through the years. Now, little boy Anthony. Up front. Saying, boys, follow me. Hello? I told Sister Gail and Sister Linda, I want you to help the boys learn how to walk, or at least crawl, and y'all can take a break. They don't listen. She's still that mother hen in there. Come on, stand there. Look at you. Check the chair. And they. But every now and then, with Sister Gayle here. <laughs> Hello. It works right on, doesn't it? And when we thank God for those who are here that may not be part of the group anymore an active way, that's all right. You did what you did when you did. And that wasn't matter, because if you hadn't brought us that far, the others wouldn't have gotten aboard. So we thank you. Now, I'm going to move on, because I know y'all usually get out before 1 o'clock. <laughs> and I got a lot to say, and it'll take by that time you get it all in. Now, somebody said, if you make a noise, we can get on with this, but I'm not going to put that burden on you. I came to preach. Now, I'm going to tell you, like I hear preachers say sometimes, when they are preaching, and you trying to make them preach, yeah, oh, yeah, then they tell you what? I feel my help. My help is here. And then when you get quiet, because you say, well, this help me. Their help is there. Then they get mad. If you're dead, go get in the graveyard. And you're, so I'm not going to ask you to do anything that the Spirit doesn't tell you to do. But I come to share with you. After eight decades upon this earth, there's a lot of things. There are a lot of things I've done wrong. There are a lot of things I did right. But I found out one thing. When I placed my hand in God's hand, I didn't have to worry about none of that. God got my back. 
I sister read our scripture that I recommend and share with the pastor to be offered as a supplement, a support for the message. But I share now, I'm holding the mic just in case I happen to move out. I noticed when watching the videos, whenever I moved just to the edge, I didn't hear a thing I said. So I'm holding on to the mic. But now I want to share this brief verse with you. It's found in Proverbs. I think you know that's a book of wisdom. Understanding. And this is what we need to get, don't we? See, sometimes we got so great intent. But sometimes we don't think about what we do. We don't think about what impact it have on other folk. Hello? And, and so this book of wisdom says this in the 24th chapter, the 16th verse. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble with calamity strike. We'll explain that. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to share what you gave to me for us. I didn't know I would be in the pulpit on this day. But you told me to tell those that I meet along the way that we all might be blessed as we travel this journey together. Like the school system said, just like everything else said these days, no one should be left behind. It's not enough for us to make it in. But you asked us to bring a friend. So, Lord, help us to take the focus of our study and put it on the big picture so that all may rise together. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell you a brief story. Of a fellow who once was young that I know real well took a bride Wanted to make sure that after seeing so many relationships that you cover many bases that would cause such a thing. So he made a little list and began to say, now, this is what I suggest that we do. And the person began to share. And all of a sudden, after the sharing, he made a personal commitment. See, no matter how many people go with you, how many people you ask to be a part of what you're doing, you have to make a commitment for yourself. And in that commitment, he thought that the best thing to do, if and when we are blessed with children, honey, don't you and I ever disagree in front of the children? You see, when father and mother disagree, it would damage the children. It would scar them for life. So I don't care how we feel. Stop. And pretend everything is all right. We got it together. And you know how children feel about their parents. You, you, how you felt about your parents when you were a little child. My daddy was five foot six. They tell me I used to be five five. And when I tell daddy about the shortness that I got from him, he said I grew my dad. He was four foot eight. That ain't my problem that you shorter than me. But daddy was the biggest man in town. My mama, oh, my goodness. Oh, she was the sweetest, kindest lady, the strongest prayer warrior that I ever know. Yeah. 
You don't want to hear anything bad about your firm. So the decision was made what? Keep it to yourself. Later on in life, the eyes of the young man who was just 21, barely grown, and the bride who just barely adult 18, that what they had been teaching each other was not the best thing. You see, one day, their children going to get in a relationship. Hello? And, and see, they need to realize you don't have to keep the child out, out of the sight of disagreement. If that's the way you feel, you may need to say it, but just know how to say it. Hello? But sometimes the best thing that we can do for each other is to tell the truth. You see, the child, now the first argument, first disagreement they have, what they going to say? Mom and dad never disagree. So if I'm disagreeing with my wife or my husband, guess what's happening? Oh, God, the relationship is gone. There ain't no need to fight for this because what? I failed. It's over. Because people that love each other never disagree. My mama told me, though, that tongue and teeth. Hello? Sometimes we bring that mindset to the church. And sometimes instead of telling people about God, we are too busy telling them about ourselves. Now, I, I don't care how high you get, how holy you get, it won't save me. But I can lift up Jesus. He can save all of us. So, for, so, so if we want to help people who are new in faith, sometimes we need to just talk about Jesus. Not talk about how good we are. Now, nothing never bothered me. Because what? Since I met my blessed Savior, I don't get upset. I just took it aside and go about my business. Well, I know I'm worse than most people. I can't chuck it aside all the time. I used to get junkyard dog mad. Because, see, people used to tell me that I was short, Jerry. They're lying on me. And I got mad. I didn't start fights, but they kept pushing it. Hello, I threw a punch. And if it's too much for, for me, I had it for mom. See, people need to know the truth. And, and I want to tell the rest of the story. After preaching 34 years as a pastor, almost 50 years otherwise, I still fall down. And I come to tell you today, I don't care who you are. This is for you. We fall down. As George Bush was saying, read my lips. I didn't say I fall down. You fall down. I said, who fall down? As I told the preacher that was on the bus coming from Duke University after we visited the black church revival, he was asked to say, how did I do? I told the story before. And I told him, I said, you did all right, because he already asked the boy. And they said, oh, man, you did a fine job. You did 
not going to do it. You did a fine job. But next time you get in the pulpit, don't tell about you people. You people. You people need to do better. We all need to do better. You see, I do more in the church than anybody we will say. Make no difference. When everybody else is quiet, child, I'm yelling and screaming. Yeah, that make no difference. When nobody don't even know the tongues I'm speaking, it don't make no difference. Guess what? You still fall down. Every one of us fall down. But what I used to, you know what I don't used to? If you take the material, she say, I fell down yesterday. Because sometimes, like the lady that said, what, I fall and I can't get up. She, some say, what, I fall and I can't get up. You see her with a basket of clothes in her hand. You see another man say, what, I've fallen in the park. And another one said, what, I've fallen in my home. Sometimes I don't fall in the church. I fall in my home. But I fall down. Every now and then, Miss Haver doesn't mean anything by what she said. But that boogeyman in me won't let it go. Sometimes I try to talk to her and the, the angel in her. Because the Lord told her to slap me. You see, see we, we, we call it anything else but the same thing. Now, we say, well, well, you know, the word tells us that this, and that's what I go by, yes, yes. I go by the word, too. But I want to remind us, we are educated people now. God just gives just you books. God gave you a brain. Which one do you think he gave you first? We think the, the scripture built the church. It did not. I didn't mean to teach you Bible. But it's the church that built the scripture. And this ain't grandmama church. And this ain't granddaddy's church. This is the new greater St. Stephen United Methodist Church. There's another generation coming here. You can't keep doing business like you used to. So we said we change. Oh, yes, we have. I heard the word saved, sanctified, filled with the blessed of the Holy Spirit everywhere I go. And I smile and I say, I know what you're talking about. You're not talking over my head. Guess what? Mama kept talking and praying and the church kept begging, kept putting up with me. Till one day I said, I'm going to try this man too. Because I begin to believe all the things they said about me. And guess what? I'm also saved. Then I decided... I, I wouldn't just go about like I used to do. But what I would do, I would commit my life to this man. God, I'm yours. I'm no longer mine. Try me in now and see. Then I sanctified myself. Last time I came here, I told you, these books and hymn books, scarves, and all the things in the church is what? Sanctified. Get over yourself. Sanctified because it's set apart for God and you. That's what it means. And every time somebody do something, we either classify them or they or not. Let me tell you something, too, that the Bible will tell you. If God calls you to a work, God prepares you for the work. There is no preacher that he hadn't called, that he had called, that didn't, was not ordained. But none it. That's our favorite word, isn't it? When I was going, it was sanctified. Oh, I'm trying to find. Yeah. I'm anointed. I, 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 I wish Sister Bishop was here. I was going to use her as my backdrop. When I came, they was talking about how blessed she was in her, her work. Smart mathematician. And I remember she getting the plaques and things since I've been here. God called to that work. He was anointed to teach. If God called her to it. I went to hear her last two sermons. One at Julius Church. The other one couldn't get there because we were busy here trying to support the women of this church. And I heard it online. And I said to myself, she did a fine job. She must be anointed. 
Hello. Anything God called you to do, God prepared you to do it. But we think because I do this and they can't do what I do, oh, they ain't got it. And boy, if you really want to be a nun, talk loud. <laughs> oh, he on fire. You get in a meeting, you can't even sit down and talk together. But what? Oh, I'm on fire. He on something, but it ain't he fire. They tell me that. Bulldog, what that kind of thing, the mad dog, he'll, he'll, he'll have you on fire. It, it got to show up in your whole life. And what we are, we are broken people. See, you, you don't hear me talk too much about the devil. Because as long as you keep putting your problem on somebody else, you'll never get right. I did some mess. <laughs> Anthony, there was no devil. I decided I wanted to do that. Ain't gonna put it on nobody. I know I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm the one who got to pay for it too if I don't get it right in her. Oh, the devil made me do it. Yeah, I wanted to go to church this morning. The devil moved my green shoes and my gray one, you know. The, the people listening and children are trying to learn. Don't give the devil so much credit. And see, what we try to do, we say, we try to run from the devil. We're all over the place, church to church, down the street, changing church, change church name. We are trying to do what? Get away from the devil. Because everything is not like I think it ought to be. And we use God as an excuse to mistreat each other. But, Ram, how in the world can we be people that keep sinning when God saved? Was that best that question? Well, thank you. I was doing it. You see, you got anybody got a little children? I see the grandmama holding a couple of them there. I see, I see my granddaughter, my grandson. I, we, I got a bunch of at eight, eight, de at what I call it, eight decades. There's a bunch of them out there got my name. And then there I got some that adopted bonus. Hello? Catch it. But this is what it is. I don't care what they do. What you do? Sister there with the grand. She said, Wash the dishes. She get an attitude. Baby, I want you to go in and get your clothes and hit the road. Huh? See, people begin to believe that's God. If you don't get it all right every time, God will kick you to the curb. Because, see, you got to be like me. Because ain't nothing bother me. Why? Because I'm in a different league than you. Lie. Yeah. Now, the young people that are young in the faith, you could be 90 years old, but you just met Christ. You're trying to find your way. But I tried it. I did my best. And I still find myself thinking things, saying things that I shouldn't say. Oh, my God. I might well go back out in the street and do what I've been doing. But what? I'm wasting my time trying to serve God because they said, if you serve God, your children gonna obey you. Your wife gonna call you me, Lord. Everything gonna fall down in place. Oh no, people! You can do all you can. Every now and then, you find yourself with a rag in your hand, wiping away your tears. Treat somebody right; they still treat you right. It hurt like the dick, and then sometimes you see them coming. You say, "Get them." Out of my face. Is that God? But I know we talk about the Bible as our backdrop, okay? Remember Paul, who wrote most of that news? He got upset with his buddy Mark. He always almost lost a good friend. They said, look, let's give him another chance. 
Let him go on a journey with us. Paul said, I'm just going to. I ain't taking that rascal nowhere. And he and his buddy argued over it. He wrote something here. Not, not Paul. But I found out Paul is just like Joseph. Great Michael. He's a man. Every one of us as a preacher, a prophet, are called to speak to one people. And that's the people in our generation. I'm not up here preaching to your great, 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 great grandchildren. I'm speaking to us about our circumstance today. Okay? Follow me now. Because I don't want you to say, well, he wasn't preaching Bible. Paul preached to people his day. Back then, they told you women to set your behind down. I couldn't use that 20 years ago when I was here. But Reverend Carter got by with it, so I figured I'd try. Because you were so holy back then, I couldn't say nothing about the Bible. Would say. If it ain't sweet, I don't care. I, I read it at the Bible. Oh, you can't say that. The children listening. But you're talking about, give me the word. And I tell you, oh, no. Don't you know the friend, church? It's in the Bible. <laughs> Hello. But we take what we want, and we push away the rest. And just because they wrote a ducky to the church 3,000 years ago, I look up on the yard, I lead the parade with my Mercedes. Can I bring the sports car? You got your limousine. Hello. We don't have to leave in the morning because we got to walk to Bethany. We can leave five minutes, 20 miles from church. Jerry, we're not but two minutes late. Driving like fools. They get here to do what? Tell people about yourself. Somebody walking. Somebody have nobody to walk with them. They need to hear about a man who will walk with them. Hello. If you want to change the world, that's what we got to do. And then there's some things that I happened to turn on the other day, and I was listening, said Bishop Holston was giving his speech to the General Conference. Listen in. I don't know much about the phone, Lamont, but I was able to press a button, and it came on, and I saw an arrow. I said, well, it said go that way. I pressed again. And I heard Bishop say, Bishop Holston, you see that old man getting old? Preacher. He said, one thing that we need to realize, God didn't give us the church for our pleasure. He gave us the church for his purpose. And what is his purpose? His purpose that none of us get left behind. He, he gave it the church that the church would be a beacon in the community. The church would guide our future. When the world would reject you, the world would love you. Now, we like to talk about people that got itching their ale now because we try to tell people something they agree, disagree with. We call them down, don't we? See, because if you, if, you, if you agree with me, you're holy. If you're not, you, you, you need to go to hell. There ain't nothing but the devil. So people are forced to be quiet because what? You say, well, I go along with it because what? If I, if I don't go along with it, they're going to call me a heathen. And he said, well, we welcome people. Yeah, but they can't say nothing unless you tell them to say it. And then if you say this, it's okay. Now, I told you I may not be back. See, those you love, you chasten. You tell them the truth. And now I was saddened to hear. That some of you want to leave town. But I've said it before, I say what I got to say. If St. Stephen ain't be coming to you, you need to be going someplace else. But don't close something that has built this community. Some of us wouldn't be up here talking about how good. 
God been if it had not been for 60? Hello. Now, I'm dissatisfied because what? You don't do it like me. We talk about how we won't listen to the truth because of missionaries, but the Bible also says, before the end, there'll be those who will kill you and say, God, I'm doing him a favor. Let me tell you, most of you is, used to be a time everybody in the neighborhood could spank me. Then my daughter came along and granddaughters, you touch my child. It's a dim ball getting in. Hello. God said, be careful how you treat the children. I'm telling a little story about make the point a little better. Guy came to the church, told the pastor, you, there's a bunch of boys coming to this church. You need to put them out. I'm tired of looking at their fruit of the loom. And most of the time they down, and I'm looking at something else. Put them out of the church. One day the pastor went by the house of the man who was telling the pastor what he should put all those strip rats out of the church. Because they ain't holy enough. They ain't like us. Look at them boys and they raise them. He sat there and he watched the man's son sitting to the table, eating in the man's house, at the man's table, eating the food the man bought. When they got up, all he could see was fruit of the loop. Hello. <laughs> this is not Burger King. In no church here. You don't have it your way. See, the food is on the table. You either eat. I got some picky grandchildren. I don't eat that. I don't eat this. Now say what? You want to eat? It's on the table. And here he was trying to tell people who could come to God's house. Don't even have the guts to rule his own house. See, this is not ours. This is God. Well, I saw this. What year did he say that? We just had a law passed in Arizona. They said, they, what, 200 years ago? And the judge said, hey, that's what you do now. That was then. It don't work now. Hello? This is not Grandmama Church. This is not Granddaddy Church. Take the principles and equate them to where we are. It still works. Still works. But we have to what? Well, you see, God is the same, Rev, as he was yesterday, today, yes. Yeah, your God was, and God is. But guess what? You ain't God. I ain't God. Hello. <laughs> In a remarriage, somebody said, well, that's John's wife. And you go downtown and pay your $40. Hello. Somebody say, who wife? That's John. He said, John, better not come here. That's mine. What's true today may not be true. That's why we bet on the thing that's always the same. We bet on God. Everything else changed. If you are not changing, you are dying. You got to move. Man, I went out there and cropped the backer. That way they told me, you don't have to drive the mule. Get on the back of that drag. I'm going to pull it with my big old package. End of the day, boy, she give me a pocket full of money. A whole pocket like that. You see that? Man, I walked around there showing it to my brother. <laughs> Man, I'm nigga rich. Now, <laughs> I got one of them cars. I 
something. Sometimes there's something in the back. Man, go down there when it get through the, the day of paper, half of the grocery list it said, it rejected it, sir. What used to be ain't what it is today. Except God. If you're not growing, if you're not moving, you're not willing to change, you are left behind. I believe that's why God don't let us live for so long. Uh, Dr. King talked about how they are bend toward justice. See, we can't bend for so much. We'll stop bending. I ain't going to do no more. See, I'm going to stand on the word. So, you know, so you might need to do it a little different. Sure, the preacher used to sit up there. Y'all might need to sit up there. We can sit down there. Whatever works, work. Remember we talked about changing the Sunday school? Hello? We you know Sunday school for me on Sunday morning. And I said, baby, please try it. So we can go to four Sunday school. You did it. The first thing they was calling us. Come down to Lake Tunalusta. I want you to tell them what St. Stephen did. Oh, I remember Miss Hooker. She said, baby, on your knee. Read the verse. All of us packed the ball. We went out the ball. We did. What do y'all do, man? We, we did it. Oh, boy, we did such amazing things. All we did was what? Trust him. God did everything. Hello? He changed the mind, and it was. So now, look. And I'm going to give you this scripture. I'm, uh, I'm sure I got another hour. That you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But it's the scripture that speaks to you. Don't jump three hearts, ten steps, and a Sunday school for all your own help they have. Guess what? You can do no work at all. Even at Reverend Carl's funeral, he can sing what? Not my work of love. Love. See, everything else fails. Love. Lift up. If people are to change, if you know they're wrong, what you do? I used to tell the church that I think I might have said it here, but I know I told all the others. I might have omitted you. I said I used to yell from the pulpit. What do you do when somebody is controversial? When you can't get along with them, you say, "Rab, you love hell out of them." You see that what happened to me? I was mad as a junkyard dog, getting mad. I know I was short, but don't tell me. And I get mad because you know the truth. But love, he loved me in spite of me. All the time you or everybody else might have said, you ain't no good. That one preacher told, uh, uh, remember told me in my latter days, I don't even know what he even called you. I said, that ain't yours to call. He could have called you. But why didn't he? But instead he called me. And I'm still there. And said, why would he call me? Everybody said, well, Joe, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do this, you did that. Oh, you did all this, all this good thing. Oh, y'all be like Joe. But Lord, they could have followed Joe around, not in the night, in the daytime. You be talking about Joe another way. And I used to tell mom the same thing. Your brother, I want them to be like you. I said, Mama, first thing you're going to do, you're going to make my brothers mad with me. And you're going to bring a rift between us. Let them be themselves. But we got to work strong to respect their difference. And don't let a girl <laughs> make a little mistake. You ought to be like other brother girl. No, you don't want to like other girl. No girl. The other one know everybody in town. She met somebody, she still felt love. 
And when you love somebody, sometimes you give yourself away. One time, that's all it takes. But because you don't have that trail behind you, you're the good one. All of us fall It's time for people to know us. So when we talk about how we make it, they say, I want me some of that. Give me. Give me. How can you love me? If you're afraid to put your hand up on me. How can you love me? Just because. Just because I want nothing to do with you. So what you gonna do? I'm gonna get from around you. I'm gonna write you off. I'm gonna write you out. We gonna put a new sign on the door. I don't want you coming here by mistake. We gonna change our name. Only the righteous can come through that door. Because y'all, we know you're wrong, because what? See, we know what's right and wrong. Because we're doing the will of God. Let me give you some will, and let me, let me see it. And you can go to the alley with it. Even though we try to figure out, is this true, or is true, this act of this, or people just doing this, people just doing that, do you know? I don't know. Because I'm looking at the outside. But who can see what's for real? Who can change what's wrong? So, oh, I can do it. But don't you know I'm a prophet? I can't even fix me. So all we can do is bring to the throne of grace and say, God, we delivered them in your hand. We will stand over here and pray while you make your change. If you are good, they're good enough for you, they're good enough for me. He didn't want to burden us with a whole lot of don't do this and don't do that and you can't do that. He tried to narrow it down a little bit. Then he began to tell us, you know, uh, you, you may not be able to remember all of that, but let me give you two that if you can remember those, that'll take care of all of it. What I want you to do, I want you to love me. I want you to love me with your heart, your mind, your soul. Love me with everything. That's what I want you to do. Okay, I got one more, and uh, his last one to the other. I want you to love your brother, love your sister, just like you love you, and just like I love you. If you get those two right, somebody tell you that he didn't say those people don't have no business to be in the church because he did what? You can tell him, yeah, he told me to focus on those two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to love them. I don't care what's real. I'm going to I'm a love them. That's what he's going to hold you for. That's what he's going to hold me for. If you're going to do his work, you got to love. Ain't no ill. Because all of us are wrong. We, when he came to get us, and we're still wrong. That's why I find people say, well, you know, I used to. Yeah, bro, I used to drink mad dog. I don't drink it no more. He said, okay. So what? You ain't no better. You might well be drunk. You're still lying. You're still cheating. You're still messing up the church. What What changed? Well, I don't drink. So now you you sober while you do this. So you really know. I've been baptized. Oh, yeah, so what? I, the water don't change it. Shoot, I, 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 I bathed before I left the church. I got so emotional here, I'm probably smelling again. 
But it's supposed to fix it. No, people. God is there like a good father. Just like our earthly father. That's what I was read. Your daddy and mama won't do you that way. They won't kick you to the curb because you're making a mistake. That's my child. I see moms walking behind 50-year-old boys talking about my, my baby. Because that's my child. That's what God did to me. So I asked a little boy, just like you, no good low-down scoundrel. That's all of us. But God didn't kick us out. God said, come to me. I love you. When nobody else will love you, I'll love you. If we want to be God's present in the world, that's the week we got to do. We don't quit. We don't give up. We don't give in. Because we say what? God can do anything to say. So why do we want to bail? Say the code. It'll pay off at the bottom. When your grandkids come along because you saved some souls, you've got some kids that they can join who know right from wrong. But you leave your world in a mess for what? I just had cancer. I'm sitting up in a conference session, and the guys tell me about the problem. They cursed away. You can smell the booze in the session. I sat outside. We were talking to them. You let them curse in your session. I was telling them, I'm a preacher. I ain't come to tell them I'm a preacher. I come to help them through their problem. They need to exhale. And when they get it out, then I'll tell them about Jesus. So they have something to put in. But I'm going to go there and tell them, how could you say such a thing? And all they're trying to do is what? Empty themselves. I shut them down so what? Oh, man, shut up. No, let them get it out. And then love. We want to head for the hill. Flee. I don't tell you nothing else. Flee. Don't curse your soul. Don't curse your kids. And don't think that you're doing God a favor when you choose to love. You ain't got to understand it all. What else song say? Real love. may be entertaining agents on a way. In the system, if you were sick, then you could come. Remember? Know what I found? Who said? Because the situation. Was it the man? Was it his mama or dad? What did Jesus say? Either one of them. But that God, his love, can be manifested in this thing. See, sometimes it's just sad. Hello? Yeah, I can't be around that. So God doesn't want me to. God wants me to be saved. And loving is not easy. Because everybody not going to love you back. Can I come back to church at least if I can't preach no more? Please. I'm messed up, but I, I'll come and I'll, I won't say much. Will y'all let me come back? Thank you. Thank you so very, thank you so very, very much. <laughs> at this time, I... Right, no, no, no. We, 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 I, what, they don't, they don't sing, or do I? They, okay, I, I, I'm going to invite you. Anybody ready to work? Got on your working clothes? Open mind? Open heart? I heard that somewhere, no. Was that the Methodist Church? Open door? Close mind? Close door. That wasn't that wasn't that, that wasn't this church, was it? The Methodist church, I mean. No, that was the Oh, that was somebody else said that. But we said everybody's welcome. 
He's awesome. Whosoever will. Do what? And if anyone among me, among us, who is without sin, <laughs> no, you stick around. Because we might can help you. If not, God can. Come. Don't let anybody tell you that God is through with you. Because you didn't dot every I and cross every T. That's what a parent will do. They'll make sure their children got life insurance. If they had to pay the premium. See, he did that. He paid the premium on Calvary. He did the suffering. He's not walking away. You and I ain't done nothing but accept what he did. Now we want to walk away because we had too much. Don't let God down. Please come. Please come. Please come. Does anyone desire prayer? You may come. Let us pray. Lord, we come. An imperfect people. In an imperfect church. In an imperfect world. You prayed to the Father. When you express your love, you said, Lord, I did not all the world, and the world won't always be kind. So I'm not asking you to take my children out of the world. But we ask you to protect them. Help us to know that no matter what we go through, Sometime it'll be received and sometimes it'll be rejected. But if it's rooted in love, we don't have to worry about it. He said, go ahead and cast your bread upon the water. It'll accomplish what I will. It will not come back void. I know the struggle. You sent me into the vineyard. You told me to love. Show no favoritism. That one is no better than the other one. That you are no respect of person. You told us you had a place called church. It was like unto a body. It had eyes and nose and mouth and teeth. And you say in that place was a place for everybody. To express the gift that you gave. You gave what is needed to make the church whole. If Lord, when all of us want to be ahead, the church is broken. When all of us want to be feet, the church is incomplete. But Lord, when all of us will take our place in the body, and when all of us would allow each other to do so. I know. Sometimes I get a little weary on this journey. It seems like I'm out here working all by myself. So I say sometimes, oh, I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm getting tired of begging. 
They might complain, but they'll never say yes when you ask, you ask them. So, Lord, I'm moving on by myself. But you didn't ask me to come by myself. You said, I want you to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You see, when they know better, they will do better. Because now that I know better, I do better. Help us to understand that we are on different legs of the journey. Things that you are so gung-ho about today. Ten years ago, you act like you never heard it. You grew. You come into God's saving knowledge and grace. They will do the same. Be patient. Long-suffering. Trusting. God in God's time. God will work it out. He will give the victory. So now when we all gather around the throne, on that great day of coronation, that old drunken girl that we thought would be no good, that old no good boy that we said he'll never work much, and those people that may not have been built like us that you created too, we all are being together around your throne, not thinking about the suit we got on, the dress, how many jobs, or whatever else. All oh, we'll be so busy just saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because now we look back and wonder how we got over, but we know the truth. If it had not been for you, oh, we would have been gone a long time ago. If it had not been you, the things we tried to do would have all failed. But, Lord, thank you that you did give up on us, but you saw us through. Sometimes we are told, take the word and beat you with it. He promised it, make him use it. He got to do it because he said that and all this. But, God, you want to bless us. And help us to give you a reason to bless you by being faithful. You don't move but because we insisted. Because we got some kind of straight connection. You move because you're God. You see, you're the same God who allowed the sun to shine on the unjust who don't think about you. Just like you do the ones that stay in church every day. You let the sun shine on the preacher, the deacon, every member. Each one the same. Help us to imitate you. Help us to learn to forgive. Help us to learn to forget the things we need to forget and remember the things we need to remember. Remember who we are and who we are. You said you can tell because you got love one for the other. That love about it. There may be sickness at the altar in the pew. There may be trouble in the heart in this place. There be those who might be a little disgruntled, might even say, I don't understand all of this. How in the world can it be that I gave my life to you and Rev said, we still sinners. You see, we are children. We are children. We are children of God but we are not God if we knew what going to be tomorrow even before the day we leave we could plan but we don't know we are children you know we are your children and I'm so glad you still our father when we gave you our hand and our heart you said I'll see you through and we're not counting on our goodness we still counting on you so blessed now as we go from this place. Let us go. Peace. Joy. Saying that, Lord, and my mom said, if I'm too high, bring me down. In this life, outside of your gate, 
we pray this prayer. And we say the earnest part of my heart. Amen. Bless us again. Y'all want to be right. Put your hands together. Let me sing this song. I just want to be right. I just want to be right. I just want to be Five years old, 
yes, be right. I could have been be right. a drug I dealer. Be right. I could have been be right. a drug addict. Be right. I could have been be right. an alcoholic. Be right. I could have been be right. a robber. Be right. But look, be right. but look, be right. but look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look. Be right. Oh, I'll be right. 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 Oh, I said right. I just want to be right, right with Jesus. Amen. Right with Jesus. You'll never be able to satisfy me. I said, be right with him. Thank you so very, very much for coming. Uh, I don't know whether you knew I was coming or not, so I can't say you came for me. You came to worship. And that's what you come to do. And we thank God for that. Somebody said, well, I'm coming looking for a blessing. I said, you've been blessing me all week. I just come to say thank you for what you've done for me. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, our leadership, our, our lovely evangelist, Miss Staley, and be able to pass our love on to your fine gentleman. Thank this wonderful choir that Happened to come here when I did. Uh, thank you for staying here all these years. Don't leave them now. Thank all of you for all that you do. Little boy on the drum. Running around wearing devil to death when I got here. Over there. Sister Emma and I went down when, when God blessed a couple. You see one in the back and one in the front. We saw a little boy in a bassinet. came home and he said every time he looked around he was beating on the lamp table beating on everything Miss Abram bought him a little drum hello and then when, when, when Gail Lou couldn't be there she was there kept raising him amen you know it, it's a part of us amen and I look around the church and see you doing so fine I feel good even though I had nothing to do with it because you can be in any dumb thing you want to be it ain't got nothing to do with me. It's how you accept what God has done. So thank you so much. I want to thank my sweet little angel. I'm talking about Layla. <laughs> and, and William. Look at the table smiling. And I'm talking about but I want to thank her for hanging out with us as long as she did. Amen. Thank all of you, my musician. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Stay in the business hall. Please stand and identify yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I know Ms. Thelma Green and the family may not call themselves visitors because they were a part of two of my churches. So they are home. But we're always grateful to see you. You get more beautiful every time I see you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank the ushers. Thank you, lady. Thank 
Amen, amen. Thank you so very, very much. I think I, I, I said you visit our Jerry this cousin Jeremiah. He he know he's included in that. Thank you so much. Paul, you did. Let everybody say. Everybody say. Congregation say Congregation say Everybody say we've come, please accept our meek attempts at praise and worship. We realize we didn't give you all the honor and praise that you deserve because we are frail and we don't have the power. But Lord, you know our hearts. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And there is nothing you can do about it. And you love us. You love us. And nobody can tell you that they doubt it. Now go with us. In your love, your power, your majesty, that we might walk upright the best we can. But if we happen to fall, pick us up. Give us another chance. Like you always have done. For it's in the name of God, the creating God, who said all he makes is good. For that gift of your son, who came to set us in right keeping with you. And then we needed something to empower us, to remind us of all the things that you've done and can do. Your Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Be blessed all week, children.